One of your most asked questions is what camera should you buy? And it makes complete sense. There are so many different options out there. In this video, I'm gonna give you a practical user guide based on a few years of professional experience. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, my friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. This is Master Your Craft, but this week we're going to do things just a little different. I want to give you some honest advice from a professional photographer on what camera you should buy, and I want to make this very practical. So I'm going to break this into three different points along your photographic journey, and along the way, I'm going to give you my opinions and advice on what cameras you should buy. Point number one in your photographic journey is just starting out. So you don't have a dedicated camera and the only pictures that you really take are with your phone. My advice on the camera that you should first invest in is a better phone. I know this sounds crazy, so hear me out. The phone and the cameras built in is always going to be the most accessible camera to you. It's the camera that you're always going to have with you. If you invest in a high quality phone with a good built in camera, then you essentially have a nice advanced point and shoot with you at all times. In fact, every image that you see here was captured with just a phone. These are all images that are part of our creative photography 101 course where we teach you how to create professional images with just an iPhone. Now you can go the iPhone route, you can go the Android route. What I would recommend though is invest in a model that has three built-in lenses where you get a wide angle lens, you get a medium lens, you get a tight lens. Instead of jumping straight into a dedicated rig and spending thousands of dollars, spend hundreds of dollars to get a better phone so that you always have a good point and shoot camera with you. Okay, step two in your photographic journey, you're ready for a dedicated camera. Now I would say you're ready for this step when you're already taking fantastic images with your phone, like the images that we shown earlier, but you're starting to realize that the phone's lack of controls in terms of shutter speed, in terms of aperture, in terms of ISO, it's low light sensitivity, overall exposure control, everything is starting to hold you back. When you start to get to that place, you're ready for a dedicated camera. I would also suggest jumping to a dedicated camera if you have aspirations for your photography that are just beyond the hobbyist. Maybe you wanna become a professional, you need to get into a dedicated system so you can begin learning quicker. Let me explain what that means. See, most of us, we end up jumping from the phone to kind of a mid-level camera system. And the problem is that the difference in the quality doesn't necessarily make up for all of the inconveniences of having that camera system. Not only are you lugging around extra equipment, but then you have to deal with the files that come off of it. You might have to process them. And the quality difference isn't substantial enough to you to merit taking it out. So what ends up happening with these kind of mid-level cameras, these kind of advanced, dedicated point and shoot cameras is that they just kind of get left at home or left in the car. We just say, oh, you know what? On this go around, I'm just gonna end up using my phone anyway. So already having a good phone camera, I want you to jump into a dedicated camera that has a significant difference, a significant payoff, a reason to carry it out and about because it does things that your phone camera can't even come close to. Now you might think that this is gonna break the bank, but it won't. See the beauty in all of these latest camera updates, Canon's releasing the R5, Sony's got the A7R4, the A7S3, everybody is putting out new cameras constantly. And the beauty in that is that on the used market, you can get wonderful full frame cameras for about a thousand bucks. So I would go to the Adorama store. You can begin your search here. They actually sell used cameras there. So for around a thousand bucks, you can pick up something like a Sony A7R2. You can pick up an EOS R. I have the EOS R right here. And with the announcement of the R5 and the R6, you can bet that these cameras used are gonna drop in price quite a bit. On the Nikon side, you have the Z5, the Z6. On the Fuji side, we have options as well. On each side, you can pick whatever manufacturer you like most. What's crazy about this is for around a thousand bucks, you're picking up a camera body that has the potential to shoot professional images. That's gonna rely on your education and knowledge. But in addition, 
it's also using the latest manufacturer lens mounts. So the lenses that you buy for these mirrorless cameras, well, they're gonna be able to be used for quite a bit of time because they're all using the latest mount systems as opposed to investing in older DSLR cameras where the lenses are basically dated and they're gonna have a limited lifespan. Now let's move to step three in your photographic journey. You're a serious photographer, when should you upgrade? These are those of you that already have wonderful dedicated systems, you're enthusiasts or even professionals, and you're just wondering when is a good time to jump into the next camera. I'm gonna give you two scenarios, okay? So let's talk first from just the logical side. I would say that you are ready for a camera upgrade from a logical standpoint when your existing camera system is actually holding you back. Now, this could be in many different areas, right? Your existing camera body, maybe the autofocus system and speeds hold you back and you're getting a lot of blurry images. It just can't keep up with you. That's a good reason. Maybe the resolution is too low. Maybe you wanna get more dynamic range. These are all good reasons because you're running into the limitations of the camera. The thing is, is that most of us are generally not gonna be running into those limitations. We're running into self-imposed limitations because our own skill set, our own knowledge isn't quite up to the camera that we're using. And we think it's the camera, but in reality, it's us. But there's actually another completely valid reason for wanting to upgrade your camera. And it has nothing to do with logic and it has everything to do with emotion because you want to. See, a lot of photographers will probably guilt you into thinking that there's something wrong with buying nice gear, even though maybe the gear is more than you're capable of using. There's nothing wrong with that. So long as you can afford the gear, a lot of us like to have nice things. It's the reason that people might go out and buy a sports car, even though they're not professional race car drivers. It's the reason that I personally like to buy professional chef cooking equipment for my kitchen, even though I'm just an amateur at best. There's nothing wrong with buying nice things and using them out of an appreciation. So don't let people guilt you into thinking that that's not a good reason to upgrade. My only suggestion on that side is to avoid spending your money on gear that ends up staying in your closet because then you're not really getting either. You're spending the money, but you're not really appreciating or using that gear. Okay, so for those looking at these top level cameras, I'm gonna give you some ideas of what I find most exciting and give you some thoughts on kind of what I think of each of the different manufacturers. And by the way, they're all great. I love each of them for different reasons. On the Canon side, what has me most excited obviously is the Canon R5 as well as the R6. But to be honest, while these two camera bodies are wonderful, what I am even more excited about is the new lineup of RF glass. So Canon RF glass is incredible. It's some of the best lenses that I've ever worked with. And the way they resolve detail is just nuts. Previously, when I was doing the EOS R review and I was using the RF glass, I was talking about how the glass seemed like it was designed to resolve crazy amounts of resolution, resolution far beyond what the EOS R could do. And I, I even said 80, 100 megapixels plus. And I think there's a rumor about that coming. Can I say that? Can I say that I said it first? Can I, can I say that? Okay. So on the Canon side, what I love most is ergonomics. Straight out of the box, these cameras are really designed to be picked up, to be used. The design of the menus, the functionality, the button layouts are fantastic. In addition, the colors that are coming straight out of camera really lend themselves well for a more vibrant look. Wonderful for portraiture. Granted, with any of these cameras, you could tweak the color and do that. But this is kind of what I love about Canon. So the R5, the R6, and the new RF glass is awesome to look at. Now let's go over to the Sony side. Now, if you're a cinematographer, you probably got your eye on the A7S III. If you're on the still side or maybe do a bit of both, you're probably looking at an A7R4. Honestly, I've been using the A7R4 for quite a while now, and I don't know of a camera system that is more capable than the A7R4. It is absolutely incredible. It's like having a rocket ship in your hand, and it literally does every single possible thing I would want from a still and even like the video is fantastic okay so from a cinema side it's fantastic as well it honestly does practically everything i want in a camera the only thing i wish it had was the ability to dial down the resolution a bit if i don't want all of it because all of it is a lot but dynamic range is nuts detail is nuts frame rate is nuts the camera is highly capable but along with that do expect that the camera is going to be 
a rocket ship as well when it comes to using it, right? So the menu, the ergonomics and everything, it's kind of lends itself to the user that wants more advanced functionality. That's okay. Customizing buttons and layouts and diving deep into the menu systems, those are going to be a bit cumbersome, but the payoff is incredible because what you're getting is an amazing camera. I like colors of Sony. I feel like they lend themselves very well out of the box to editorial work, architectural work, commercial work, because they come out just a little more clean and a little more neutral. Granted, you can always dial them up to be more vibrant as well. Next on the Fuji side, I absolutely love what they're doing. So I've been using the X-T4 quite a bit. Not only is it a very capable system, but one of the best things about Fuji is the feel of the camera. Like these cameras take me back to actually shooting film. On top of that, they have film stocks built right in. Now these aren't just filters, these are actual Fuji film stocks that you can digitally apply to the image as they're shot. So this makes the Fuji system completely different from every other camera out there because it offers a different sort of lifestyle experience. And the X-T4 was one of the best experiences overall that I've had. I love that camera system. Anyway, there are tons of awesome cameras coming out. I hope this gives you a few ideas into the things that I'm looking at, what I'm excited about, and hopefully this buyer guide gives you some useful insight and something that you can actually share with friends when they ask you the question, what camera should I buy? If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. You can turn on notifications so you actually are notified. Isn't that weird that you have to do that? YouTube's like, yeah, I want to subscribe, but yeah, I actually want to be told that they're uploading new videos. Please like the video, comment below. You guys can follow me as well at Born Uncreative on TikTok or PyJersa on Instagram. We also just released Creative Photography 101. So if you guys like the idea of shooting professional images with your phone, be sure to check that course out as well. It's available at slrloungeworkshops.com. Peace, see you next time.